and see what happens when sound waves strike the drum membrane. This bone, consisting of a head and handle, is called a hammer or malleus and is fastened by the handle to the drum membrane. United to the malleus by a joint is the anvil or incus, which in turn touches the stirrup or stapes. The foot plate of the stirrup is attached by a movable ligament to an opening, which is called the oval window. If from any cause the drum membrane is forced inward, its movement is transmitted to the stapes, and the upper part of its foot plate swings into the inner ear as on a hinge. Repeated pushes make the plate swing in and out, agitating the liquid which fills the inner ear. And now let's see how sound waves coming from a ringing bell act upon the ear mechanism. Here we see in slow motion how these sound waves, by beating against the drum membrane, are carried across the middle ear to the inner ear by the chain of ossicles. The inner ear, or labyrinth, contains the minute but extraordinary mechanism which finally converts sound waves into nerve impulses. If the eardrum should be destroyed, sound waves could still reach the inner ear through the surrounding bone and cause some sensation of hearing. But destruction of the labyrinth itself causes complete deafness. The labyrinth, as its name implies, consists of a maze of passages or tunnels hollowed out of the solid surrounding bone. These passages are loosely lined with a skin or membrane. Now, if we remove its surrounding bone, we reveal the shape of the entire labyrinth as it is formed by its lining membrane. Part of the labyrinth consists of these three ring-shaped passages called the semicircular canals. These, however, only aid the body in keeping its balance and need not be considered in connection with hearing. Our real interest is in this rounded portion with the two small openings and, of course, the part with which it is united and which looks like the shell of a snail. Returning to our sectional view, we see that the rounded portion contains a hollow chamber lying between the middle ear and the snail. A number of openings lead to adjoining parts, just like doors do from a hallway. So it is called the vestibule. These openings in the vestibule lead to the semicircular canals. Actively related to the hearing mechanism are these two openings which have already been pointed out on the outside of the labyrinth and which allow sound waves to pass from the eardrum to the inner ear. The first of these openings is called the round window. It is covered by a very thin membrane. The second, the oval window. Through it I received sound impulses transmitted by the plate of the state piece which covers it. And the third opening leads into the upper half of the passage, which has the shape of a snake or cockle shell, and so is called the cochlea. Within the cochlea is contained the mechanism which finally converts sound vibrations into nerve impulses. Let us look at the inside of this amazing little instrument. If we were to slice through the middle of the cochlea and then turn the separated portion face upwards, we would see inside a spiral-shaped canal, which circles around the central core of bone called the modialis. This canal is divided into an upper and lower portion by a membrane shaped like a spiral ramp. This membrane is of a highly complicated internal construction and when agitated by sound waves, sends out nerve impulses. These are conducted to the brain by nerves which unite to form the main auditory nerve leading to the auditory center. Now let's look at a simple diagram of the cochlea and its action. And this time, let's take off the top. Here again briefly, we recognize the vestibule with the oval window covered by the stirrup. And directly below is the round window covered by its membrane. And here is the third opening, which leads directly into the inner channel of the cochlea. 
This white line represents the all-important spiral membrane, which transforms sound waves into the sensation of hearing. As we have seen before, this space is filled with a liquid. Now here again, we observe the action of sound waves upon the ear. This is merely a simple picture of the complicated action that results when sound waves enter the inner ear by way of drum and ear bones. The liquid, when set into vibration, causes wave-like shakings of the spiral membrane. These shakings, in turn, set up the nerve action, which, when carried to the brain, results in the sensation of hearing. The ear, then, is a very delicate and complicated mechanical device, astonishingly sensitive in its ability to separate and to distinguish a vast medley of sounds, it excels by far the most ingenious and delicate instruments ever devised by man. While we possess the great blessing of good hearing, let us always strive to protect and to preserve this most precious gift of nature. <laughs>